As the eighth entry in the Yakuza series, Yakuza Like a Dragon might seem a bit intimidating, but launching on a whole bunch of different platforms and with a new protagonist and a brand new setting, it's as good a jumping on point as any. Joining me to talk about this brand new game is Scott Strickart, the senior localization producer from Sega on this wonderful series. Scott, thank you for joining us. Sup, Scott? Always good to hang out with you, Max. So, uh, I have been um, somewhat somewhat on media blackout with Like a Dragon. This is obviously a huge, big new installment uh, that is doing a lot of new stuff with the series. Uh, it's already been out in Japan for a little while, but uh, you guys always go a really long way with you know how you approach localization. Um, for people who haven't been paying close attention, can you give us a little bit of a rundown of you know what the setting is, who the main character is, and uh, what we can expect to see? Right, so uh, our previous protagonist, Kazuma Kiryu, his story arc ended in Yakuza 6, and we are picking up the uh, new character, Ichiban Kasuka here. Um, oh my gosh, I like it. All featuring him. <laughs> Look at uh, this he's guy. our new protagonist, and he's very much a different guy Looks than cool. Kiryu ever was. There's there's a lot of different things about him that are, uh, that, you know, whereas, where Kiryu is, we all kind of know him. Ichiban's going to um, hopefully steal everyone's hearts as uh, as we get uh into his story so his his primary story is takes place in uh, yokohama which is a, a city kind of adjacent to um well it's in tokyo but it's you know a different suburb so um it's a completely new city for us it's like three times the size of kamurocho and it's uh gonna be pretty cool so it's in tokyo now one of the big oh, huge yeah, changes tokyo. that's happening this time around is that uh yakuza which is you know historically a kind of an action beat-em-up uh, is now a party-based, uh, turn-based RPG. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you're maintaining the same level of expectation for totally over-the-top action in a, you know, a more of an RPG setting? Absolutely. So Ichiban is uh, his story is um, summon pigeons heavily dependent <laughs> on his friendship that he makes with these uh, other other characters. They're all kind of Heck, coming from the same so kind of uh, climbing out from rock bottom kind of situations. It's a, it's a lot of people kind of. Uh, from the edges of society coming together. And the dev team really felt like the best way to portray that was to allow the part the player to um, play as play as more than more than just Ichiban, to really kind of hang up. Oh, oh my that, god, like, seriously. Kind of <laughs> so he's, I love he's a very it. charismatic dude. He attracts people to his to his kind of demeanor, but at the and at the same time Yeah, um, I need to play this. He's a retro too. gamer. So um these these uh kind of RPG battles that are happening are very much kind of his his mind, his mindset, kind of happening in, in uh, that you're looking at when you, whenever it, the battles kind of transition. You probably saw that, like that when the when the battle transitions, the, the enemies that are, that are he's fighting literally become oh like God. This, this almost kind of like he's monsters. Him out with his that's all kind of happening in his head, being portrayed kind of in the game. But <laughs> we haven't, we absolutely haven't forgotten um, our roots as an action game, and there's all kinds of ways that we're um, playing playing heavily to the to the audience who's expects kind of more more quickie quick snap pit snappy kind of action is we um, get him so that's all kind of incorporated into this rpg turn-based system that um kind of under the under the hood will allow you to still kind of perform these the action that you will love and know from the oxus series hmm. i dig that uh so your your party and threatening your men making, can you talk a bit about how like how much variety you're going to have in terms of um you know party members and characters you're going to be meeting along the way Right, so right now we have the uh, full party of four. Um, you can get up to uh, six plus one uh, party member, optional. Um, and that's so that's that's going to be one way that you can differentiate your party. But we also have a full-on job system with 19 jobs that you can take up. And, you know, a lot of the times I think when you think of a job system, you're like, all right, you know, here's my thief, my ranger, my, my, my mage kind of things. But we're using, a, you know, classic Yakuza approach for this and allowing you to select, like, real-life jobs. So... Um, oh no you know, way! We'll show some some of that gameplay in a, in a in a bit here, but that um, sounds so we'll, cool. We'll we'll change all the jobs for the characters. You'll see some of, some of that kind of come into play. Ah, he has a dust. Now, lid. in the previous Yakuza <laughs> games, you occasionally you know get different outfits, but they're usually not something you can you can unlock in, until uh, you know later in the game. Are we going to see? Uh, I, I don't know if armor is the right word, but sort of different different wardrobe for Ichiban and your party members. <laughs> yes. Yes. So each job has its own custom. Uh, <laughs> Alcoholic and then flames. In addition to its own custom <laughs> outfit, has uh, a couple different variations on it. So not only that. Um, Do you know what? I really love games kind of that, that allow like you to change characters' outfits. The, uh, free, 
free add-ons. There was that, that, one that, that on the, the Wii. Only people who continues to just what throw free called? content post-launch, and those all will have costumes. It was a JRPG. Now, the setting, I want it to talk about this. Quaint. How would you say it compares, other um, than just in terms of scale, to some of the previous settings? And whimsical. Settings, uh, I just like, can't uh, remember the name of it. Amorocho. And you could literally so change Yokohama the outfit is, into is absolutely uh, anything and any like, color. Um, Nine different districts. And I remember, so I think I made the guy wear like downtown. baby you've pink got everything. The commercial district. It was you've hilarious. Got industrial district. You've got uh, <laughs> Korean town and Chinatown and all these different like areas kind of have their own vibe and their own feel to them. And what's neat about it is that, you know, there's a, you may have noticed as, as he was playing some of the, the gameplay that like there's a different threat level to each of those. So like wandering too far and outside of your level is definitely going to be more of a challenge for you and you're going to have to um, really kind of pick your strategy better yeah when you're, it looks when you're super funky areas. i love in it in terms too. of enemy variety we've seen like the wonderful you know the the there's the threatening men and there's delinquents <laughs> and there's you know, various grades of street thugs <laughs> how do you maintain that same level uh sort of with, so within the silly, pageantry of, of so a fun. Uh, are there going to be the kind of like chill vibes game really, that you like, can just pick up and play whenever you probably saw that um <laughs> As like I, like I was mentioning, like the, the enemies are literally transformed. I want to see um, sharp perfume. Play into really heavily. Um, there's 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 all kinds of different types oh, of monsters. Um, you add them uh, very early on in the story. You you gain what's called a suji dex um, in your in your as an app on your phone. And if that sounds familiar, that's there's a reason it does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so you're basically running around collecting these monsters into your into your phone app and um they're all they're all very very kind of homage type of enemies to rpgs while at the same time mixing them with that yakuza like um real life level so like that guy that changed mm -hmm. into a berserker for instance you know like, that we used a lot of western names that are um <laughs> kind of uh you know they're, they're very much an homage to a very particular uh series that um ichiban is a fan of called dragon quest I love oh, that. So Jack and this, Quest. Is, this feels like a, a Yakuza game where you're you're playing as a JRPG nerd within the game. Like there's that level of like it seems very meta. <laughs> That's it's so a fun. Meta. Yeah, yeah. There's like a whole conversation. It that, is um, pretty like, meta. Party members early on. And he's like, guys, did you see the did you see those monsters transform? And they're like, no, bro. But whatever it is that you're <laughs> thinking, like that's fine as long as it helps you fight. <laughs> I guess we've seen. I think I, I caught a glimpse of of Kiryu <laughs> showing up in uh, one of the one of the trailers or some some gameplay. Can you talk about sort of how this is going to intersect with the existing you know Yakuza uh, Judgment universe? So it's it is definitely set in the same universe. Um, when Ichiban gets out of uh, Ichiban takes a, takes the fall for a crime that he didn't commit, very similar to our previous protagonist. But when he gets out uh, in the year twenty nineteen, um, it's uh, a brand new world for him in which the Omi Alliance has essentially taken over Kamurocho. And if you're familiar with the kind of rivalry that the Omi and the Tojo clan have had uh, for the last six plus games. Um, no, I'm not familiar you know, that's with it. It's a huge it. deal, right? Like it's it's massive. And so um, all of that is kind of unfolding in the background as Ichiban is uh, continually like kicked lower and lower. And no all, way. Like you mentioned, you know, Kiryu and some of our, our previous uh, pro tags even are um, kind of kind of in the background and you'll definitely intersect with them kind of later in the game in a way that is epic, but I don't want to spoil too much. No, I think my favorite this part looks of the amazing. is obviously the, the super heavy duty, dramatic, you know, you know, operatic crime stuff is cool, but I love all of the weird sub stories and just, you know, side characters <laughs> you run into along the way. Uh, and you and the localization team always seem to have a really good time uh, bringing that stuff to. Oh no! What happened? The beginning of this of this footage. There we go. It seemed Lost like you could talk to. Second. You talk about some of just the the silly stuff that we're going to be doing in this game in addition to oh the heavy God. duty crime drama. So yeah, you, you saw that the, the crawfish over there, her name's Nancy. Um, I don't want to talk about Nancy <laughs> because we will absolutely be showing more of Nancy later, but the uh, crawfish yeah, that, that is that called Nancy. Basically making friends with the crawfish. What and, the F? Uh, you know, it's as, just as bonkers as you might expect Yaxes to be. There's still heartwarming uh, sub stories. It is There's bonkers. Very, like, you know, dramatic sub stories, but Completely for the most nuts. part, the sub stories pretty, lean pretty hard into the, the nonsense side of things. Uh, not to mention all the jobs and special attacks that uh, you're, we're now kind of seeing that, uh, you know, the, the musician, for instance, having a, a move called album drop where he literally drops an album on a guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> Baseball. Uh, now, the other thing that is huge in Yakuza games is all the different sort of mini games and activities. We've seen some of these tees. This has kart racing. Is that right? This is fun. Dragon Kart is a full on like a Tokyo 
you know it's very popular dragon cards like, get in those like little go-karts and run around the town but of course we had to bring our, our yakuza twist to that with uh, rocket launchers and satellites and all that kind of nonsense and machine guns so that's <laughs> that's very much a mini game you can play um i think later in this footage we're going to show a little bit of can quest you can hop on like a rickshaw and start collecting cans um for a little <laughs> bit of side income and uh the, that's that's hilarious and here we are uh your, your goal here <laughs> in this mini game is to uh collect these cans and get the boosts and without getting kind of taken out by your competition competition who's out there also uh, this is a competition. You have to ram them and you have to avoid the Screw the competition, man. We could do this. Back to the goal in time. Go, before, Ichiban. Uh, running out of time. Oh, there's the competition. <laughs> Are we going to see any of the sort of the business management type of uh, <laughs> games we've gotten used to? I mean, we've done, we've we've run, we've run hostess clubs. We've done, uh, you know, real estate and, and construction companies. Hostess club. Oh my gosh. There is a I full see on, that. Uh, business management mode um sub story happening and it's just as intricate as real estate royale was where Ichiban ah, would be tasked with taking over a failing confectionery company um and taking that from a literally literally <laughs> failing company to a uh a, a great holdings company where um you'll have to uh, recruit managers i love this so much and uh to go into these really this epic, is like, mental where absolutely stupid and i love it grievances and you have to fight them and apologize to them but naturally over the top level of yaks and nonsense <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I mean, the, the thing about this series that I love is that you wind up latching on to the ah, thing that shame. was you least expected. You know, there'll be some little mini game that you're like, that sounds weird. Who would be into that? And then, you know, you find yourself sinking 11 hours into it. And you're like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you, uh, are there going to be, is there going to be any dating? Uh, we've seen that kind of, that kind of got dabbled in. in, uh, in I uh, need to see uh, the judgment. dating in this game. Yeah, um, Please say if you're familiar dating. with the, um, I guess, I guess the Persona series where you can level your kind of uh, personality up a bit. Uh, if you raise certain levels of your personality enough, you might be able to approach uh, some of the ladies you've met throughout the. Oh my the gosh! The storylines and do stuff. what? So Share uh, a can with them. Uh, <laughs> Throw cans at them. <laughs> now you mentioned Persona. That's another another Sega property. Obviously, that's kind of the the when people think like the turn based JRPG that. Sega makes that's the, that's the big one, and now Yakuza is kind of dipping their toe into that. Have the have the teams like interacted at all, given each other notes on that kind of thing? Or that's a great question. Um, they're in the same building. I couldn't tell you, but um, it's <laughs> I think there's there's definitely some some learnings happening, and I think it's, it's just <laughs> a cool kind of marriage of of ideas that's, that's certainly you're seeing uh, with not only Persona but also like a dragon. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. To see <laughs> that was amazing. Sort of parallels. They're you know they're both both games where you go exploring uh you know in japan and, and making friends and, and fighting stuff and in this case it seems like it's it's definitely dabbling in that jrpg territory but it's still squarely uh you know yakuza stuff uh can you talk about sort of the the I, it doesn't it like it's weird because it doesn't look turn-based i guess the sort of the spacing seems really dynamic and, and almost more uh action rpg ish Definitely, it's super snappy. Um, so, like, you not only in the, uh, during battle are you can you can you can for one automate as anyone that you want um, to automate. So you can make it incredibly snappy that way. But also, there's this very dynamic kind of live action kind of feel happening where the characters are just kind of you know they're, they're dancing around each other a little bit. And so, like, if a character is um, between you and a or if, if a bike is between you and a character, your character will automatically pick up that bike, weave it into his attack. Um, and so, like you know, that that happens, and then the other character <laughs> pick up a up bike and weave it into your attack with that character. Um, they will, um, you know, step in and do an, 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 a follow up attack. And uh, I need to see you know, those bike attacks that are like you know where um, you've probably seen them throughout this footage where the uh, the character you'll have to be pressing buttons and, and um, you can do perfect guards. And so you're you are like on your toes at the whole the whole time. It's not a very passive battle system at all. Um, you can. Uh, tailor that to, to be as slow or as fast as you want. Yeah, I haven't played Persona well, 5 awesome. either. Um, this was, of course, got a big, huge announcement reveal it's thing. There. That the, I have there was it. the Xbox Series X Persona 5 as well as Persona 5 Royal. State of Xbox, whatever the hell we're calling it. There's too many of these things. Uh, <laughs> right. we, and everyone's dying to know about Next Gen. Can you say anything about what people can expect from Yakuza Like a Dragon on the Series X compared to sort of current gen? Uh, we're definitely supporting the smart delivery feature. Um, and outside of that, there's like... We're still figuring that out a little bit, but um, for the most part, we're we're ready to support next gen on this, which is going to be pretty cool. Okay, so uh -huh. when can people expect to get their hands on Yakuza Like a Dragon, Scott? We'll be there day one on Xbox Series X, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Windows 10, and Steam. 
Wonderful. Well, thank Cross. you so much for coming by and chatting. I'm a big fan of Yakuza, as you might have guessed That's from cool. my suit. I get married in the suit, and I do my Yakuza E3 interviews in this suit. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for coming by. This has been great. Uh, I'm dying like no more sky. about Yakuza Like a Dragon, and uh, 